If you're looking for a fast, simple, but full-featured front-end for your RG35XX, and something that's different than Garlic OS, then keep watching, as this could be perfect for you. I'll show you what it is, where to get it, and how to set it up. If you're someone who's got a Miu Mini, then you may be familiar with the Mini UI front-end, which is a very minimalist front-end for that system. Well, the good news is that it's now, or a version of it, is, a, is now available for the RG35XX. And it's the same guy that's behind it, Sean Inman. And if we look here, you can see that it's uh, on beta release. It's a pre-release version. And this one's only actually been out a few hours. So the way in which Mini UI, or in this case, MinUI works, is you get two files. There's a base pack, which contains a number of uh, systems that it can emulate. And then there's an extras pack, which in this case you can see allows you to also emulate the TurboGrafx-16, uh, Super Game Boy, etc. So let's get this downloaded, get it installed, and take a look at it. So I'm going to start by downloading the base pack. And I'll save that. And you can see that these are very small files. So let's download the extras pack. Okay, so that's both of those downloaded. And I'll start by unzipping the base pack. And I'll do the same with the extras. And let's take a look inside these. So you can see here there's not very much in here at all. We've got a folder for BIOS, another one for ROMs, another one for saves. And you can see the systems that it supports there. And these should be empty. Yep. We've got this binary file, dmenu.bin, a zip file, and then the readme file. Now, I know I'm taking you through how to install and set this up, but I advise you to read the readme file every time because there may be changes that happen after this recording and you need to be aware of any changes just in case uh, there's something there which may affect the working of your device. So it explains here the features, simple launcher, etc, etc. And it explains here that Mini, sorry, MinUI is meant to be installed over a working stock TF1. So if you've already changed that and you've replaced it with Garlic OS, for example, then here's where here's a link where you can get a copy of the stock card. So that's a useful thing to have there. Then it explains here if you're using two SD cards, the second should be formatted FAT32. So step number one is to copy the dmenu.bin to the root of the MISC partition of the SD card that goes in the TF1 slot. So let's do that now. So I've got my card inserted into the card reader and you can see I'm on the MISC partition here. And here's its contents. So I'm going to take the dmenu.bin and just drag and drop it over to here. And going back to the readme, this is where you copy the MinUI zip file will depend on if you're using one or two SD cards. Using two SD cards is recommended. If you're using one, then copy the MinUI.zip to the root of the ROMs partition. So here's our ROMs partition here. Um, and I'm not going to copy it into here because I do want to use two SD cards. So what I'm going to do is to eject this card and then I'm going to put in a blank micro SD card. Now, that card's currently formatted as XFAT, so what I'm going to do is to format it as FAT32. When you're working with cards on the RG35XX, they need to be in FAT32 format. Now, Windows will only format up to 32 gig using its default format tool. So I'm using a third-party tool called Rufus to do the formatting of this card, which is 64 gig. Now, if you've got a tool that'll do that, then use whatever you feel most comfortable with. So my card's inserted. I know it's in the G drive, and whatever you do, make sure you are selecting the correct drive. Uh, I'm going to change the boot selection to non-bootable. I'm going to change the name of this, and I'm going to call it... Uh, uh, that's going to get truncated, but I don't care. 
it just gives me a rough idea of what that card is when I insert it. And I'm going to change the file system to FAT32. And I'm going to uncheck that because I don't want the extra files stuck in there. So that's it. Got the right drive, non-bootable. I've labelled it. It's FAT32. All I need to do now is hit start. So, yep. And that's it. So I'm going to hit close and what I can do now is start getting things set up on this card. So I've got my card inserted now into my card reader and this is the card I'm going to be using for TF2 on the RG35XX. And what I'm going to do is start setting this up. So looking back at the instructions we need to copy the minui.zip file to this card and scrolling down it talks about the ROMs as well, saying that you could set up your, your ROMs folders and copy your ROMs into it. And also the BIOS files. Now it tells you which systems need BIOSes here. And if you just go into the... Uh, let me go to here. You'll see that anything that needs a BIOS, there's a folder for it here. And it tells you which files you're looking out for. So here's the zip file here. So if I just move this across, and I'm currently sitting on the card here, so I'm going to copy this minui.zip over to here. I'm also going to take these three folders and drop them into here. And if we look in the extras, you'll see that uh, it's a similar sort of thing. We get the BIOS, um, BIOS folders here, etc. So what I'm going to do is to basically take everything from here apart from the README, and also just copy that across. So we've now got an extra couple of folders here. Okay, so now that that's done, what I need to do now is I'm going to populate the BIOS folder with my BIOSes, uh, stick some ROMs in here, and I'll come back once that's completed. Now, before I populate my ROMs on that card, there is a couple of points I want to make here. And the first is that when we've added the extras pack, we've also added extra systems that can be emulated. So as such, uh, there's going to be extra BIOS requirements. And if we go into the README file, you'll see that uh, here's the extra BIOS files you're going to need to provide. So just so long as you're aware of that. The second point I'd like to make is that I'm setting my system up to use both TF1 and TF2. So because of that, I'm copying everything to the TF2 card uh, obviously with the exception of that uh, binary file that went onto TF1. However, if you're only using one card, then obviously you'll be copying everything onto your TF1 card because you won't have anything in TF2. So just so long as you're aware of that. I've got my copy of the stock card that the RG35XX came with in the TF1 slot, along with the D menu file that I copied to it. In the TF2 slot, I've got my new card that I just set up, along with the ROMs, BIOS files, and the MinUI zip file. So let's power on. Straight after the Ambenic boot screen, I get this screen showing that it is installing MinUI, followed by the MinUI splash screen. And that's it. It starts up a bit dim, but that's easily fixed by holding down the menu button and using the volume up and down buttons to adjust the brightness. You can see that the menu style is very basic, and I think somewhat reminiscent of the analog pocket menu style. And I've got to say, I quite like the simple and uncluttered interface. Select a system, and you're taken into a simple list of the games you installed, and selecting one of those plays the game, all of which is pretty standard and straightforward. There are no themes, artwork, or images to load as you navigate the interface, and everything feels very fast and snappy, and while I appreciate the vast array of options that the likes of Onion on the Mio Mini or Garlic OS on the RG35XX offer, I'm just not a fan of having to remember a whole load of button combos. For me, MinUI has it just right, with the menu button making the things I want to do easily accessible. Save and load states are easy to create and manage, with the slot positions being marked, and a big thumbnail to take the guesswork out of what you are loading. Under options, there are all sorts of things you can change to the look and performance of how your game is emulated, as well as the controls you use, and you can even create shortcuts. 
any changes you make can be saved on a per game basis or for every game for that console. There are way too many options to go through in this video and the only things that jumped out at me as missing was a rewind option. But given the limited power of the RG35XX, I don't think it would be reasonable to expect a, re a rewind option. A few more shader options might have been nice, but I typically find myself spending more time playing around with shaders and trying to get a look that I like than I actually do playing the games. So I'm pretty happy to have a very limited selection of options, as it makes everything more game focused. The Extras Pack installs a couple of tools, one of them being a way to set the clock, and the other being a file manager. Both useful additions. At the top of the main menu, you'll, no you'll notice that there is a recently played option, which can help you quickly get back into the games you're playing. But the recently played and per console options aren't the only way to group your games. So what else can MinUI do? Well, it's got a couple of other tricks up its sleeves. One of the things it does that I think is pretty neat is the way in which it handles disc-based games which are spread over multiple discs. I'm not going to read all this out to you, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, all you've got to really do is just create a folder with the name of the game, stick your bin and Q files in there and create a text file, an M3U. It details the whole process here. There's no point in me reading all this out to you. Very simple, very straightforward. Now, the other thing it does, which I, I particularly like, is the idea of collections. Now, let me show you how that works. So I'm on the card here, which is the TF2 card where I've got all my ROMs. And what I'm going to do is to create a new folder and I'm going to call this Collections. Now, I'm going to go into this and I'm going to create a new file. So I'll just create a new text file. And I'm going to call this Favorites. So what I'm going to do is to create a favorites list. And the first thing I'm going to do is to add a couple of Game Boy games. So I need to put in the path. So up here in Windows is the path to the folder. So I just clicked anywhere in here. Right click, copy, and paste it into my favorites.txt file. Now I'm going to need to edit this, but for now I'm just going to leave it as it is. So the next thing I'll do is to find the games that I want to go in there. So the first of these will be Adventure Island. So I'm going to go into there, Control A on that, Control C and paste that in there. The other one I want is uh, Burger Time. So here's that one there. And again, highlight everything in there, copy it. And I'm going to paste that on another new line in here. So I like 1942, which is our Game Boy Color game. So again, I'm going to pick up the path to that folder. So I copy that, paste that into here. Here's 1942. Copy that. And paste that into here. I can't think of any other Game Boy Color games at the moment, but I can always add them in later. That's the beauty of this. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it at these three for just now, but you get the you get the idea. You can go through all of your different systems and basically pick out the path to that system and then the games. So what I need to change here is that the G drive, for example, that's what it is on this computer. It's not going to be that when it's popped into the RG35XX. So I need to get rid of that. And the other thing is these slashes need to go the other way around. So let's change that. And I'm going to need to have one at the end. So what I'm going to do now, I mean, I've only got about three games here, so it's not a big deal, but you might have loads of games. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it in there. And... Same for burger time. So I don't need this at the top now. If I had more Game Boy games, it would just be the same thing. Just paste the path in front of it. So let's get rid of that. 
So now I need to get rid of the drive, change the slashes round, put a slash at the end of the path. In fact, I might as well just hit delete here. And that's it. So I've now created a favorites file, which has only got three games on it, but it's just enough to give you an idea of how to actually do this. So let me save that. So I look in the collections folder, there it is there. Now I could create as many of these collections as I wanted. I could go through, for example, let's go up back up to here, click on ROMs, and I could just type in Zelda. And what I could then do is we've got a, a number of GBA games there, a couple of Game Boy Color, the Game Boy game, the NES, and the uh, Super Nintendo game. I could take every one of these and create a Zelda collection and just put the path to the system on there, just the same as I did in the example I've just shown you, and then the, the names, and that would be it. I would have every Zelda game I've got there in one collection and well you know you can work it out yourself you can do whatever you want another thing i'm going to create not just now but later on is a folder called next where i can just queue up a few games that i want to try at some point once i've exhausted uh, the ones i'm currently playing and i think this is an absolutely great feature so let's take a look and see how it looks on the rg35xx you'll notice that listed under the recently played option at the top of the screen we now have another entry for collections, and any collections that we create will appear in here. Obviously, I just have the one collection that I've created, my favourites list. Selecting that, you can see the three games that I added to that collection. And of course, selecting any one of those takes me right into the game with all the usual options available to me. Personally, I love MinUI, as it's less playing with the interface and more about enjoying the games. If you haven't done so already, then it's well worth checking out.